Today I'm putting two MacBooks side by side. Hi guys, it's Claudia, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be taking you through a whole full day in the life review for the MacBook Pro 2019 Intel Core i5 versus my newest upgrade, the MacBook Pro with the M4 chip, five years apart. You might be thinking, well, of course, the newest MacBook is gonna be better. There's gonna be obvious differences. But for me, I didn't upgrade for ages because I kept thinking, Oh, my 2019 MacBook still works, it still looks fresh, still looks modern. I can just get on with my day-to-day -day whilst avoiding to spend over £1,500 on a new MacBook. But once I upgraded, I just saw how much easier things get with the newer MacBook. So I just want to like kind of compare side by side to show you the differences in how your day would go if you had either of these MacBooks. Let's quickly go over the two machines and I'll just point out the most basic differences that will be important in this video. So the older MacBook has an Intel Core i5 whereas the newest one has the M4 chip. Their display is also 13.3 inch retina display on the older MacBook but on the new one, we have a 14.2 inch display, which is the Liquid Retina XDR display. On the older MacBook, there is 500 nits brightness, but on the new one, it's double that, so 1000 nits peak brightness. Then on the older MacBook, we had the touch bar, but now on the newer MacBook, it's now gone. There is also only three USB-C ports and a headphone jack, whereas on the newest MacBook, we have a card slot, HDMI port, a headphone jack, a MagSafe free port for magnetic charging, free USB-C ports. The battery life, the older MacBook specifies that it's up to 10 hours of iTunes movie playback, which is a little bit of an old specification, but the newest MacBook has up to 24 hours of video streaming. So a little bit of a different comparison, but like you get what it's trying to say. So yeah, a few differences there, but let's see it all into use. Starting my day in 2019 MP is at 99% battery and the M4 MP is at 79% battery. This was carried out on different days and slightly different times and battery percentages, but I think it's fair to say the Intel MacBook needs a bit of a head start, don't you think? I've had some errands to run, so after I'm taking the 2019 MacBook Pro to a cafe. Some time has passed since I get there, but I kept the MacBook turned on. So after nearly three hours, the battery is now at 93%. I turned on my hotspot and I will need the notes app for research I will do on the browser. Now on the notes app, since this is a 2019 MacBook Pro, it has limited functionality, like only spelling checks and doesn't have the AI features, unfortunately. Even though I had the latest Mac OS installed, I found out you can only get the new AI features with the M1 chip or above. Comparing the day on the M4 MacBook Pro, I was making notes and the AI features are handy and quick. It's also connected to ChatGPT, which I just found out as I was making the video. And it can create summaries, bullet points, turn into a list, rewrite it to create a friendly, professional, concise tone. And I can also create requests by typing with the help of ChatGPT. But I do still prefer using ChatGPT on its own as it saves your history and it's easier to navigate. Back to the 2019 MacBook Pro next, I'm using Safari to research things to do in Gdańsk, Poland as I'm going on a weekend getaway there. And I found a couple interesting things like activities and oh my god, the food places look delicious. Mm. But yeah, web browsing feels exactly the same as on the M4 MacBook Pro. It's smooth, same refresh rate. 
the only thing is you can't split the tabs up like you can on the M4 MacBook Pro. So I could only have about two tabs split on the screen side by side, but on the newer MacBook it manages the tabs a bit better and leads you to where you can place them on the screen and adjust the size. So I can have many, many tabs on the screen split up. Quick test of the airdrop and yep, the speed is fast, exactly the same, I love it. After web browsing on both MacBooks, the Intel MacBook has 80% battery and M4 MacBook Pro has 65% battery. The 2019 MacBook Pro's battery has dropped very quickly. Next thing on the list is video editing. For 2019 MacBook Pro, I gotta use an SD card reader, but on the M4, I can just slip the memory card right in the MacBook. The speed is also different, it took a few seconds for the SD card reader to pop up on my screen. On the M4, it, I didn't even have time to zoom out with my camera and it was already ready to be used. I noticed a huge loading app speed for Premiere Pro. The app was just bouncing and bouncing whilst I was on the M4, I was already setting up the new project name and picking what file to import. I set a timer for one hour to edit and see the battery percentage after that time for both of the MacBook Pros. The annoying thing about editing on Intel MacBook Pro is that the video previews never flow and always lag, especially when the quality is high, like 4K. So I kind of have to move along the timeline really quickly with my mouse so I can guess where to cut the videos and amend them. After an hour of editing, the 2019 MacBook Pro was struggling. It was huffing and puffing with some loud fan noises. And at 3.36pm, I got a low battery notification. And at 4.14pm, the MacBook Pro 2019 died out on me. So I had to juice it up a bit so I can carry on with my to-do list in the day. Now it's time for the M4 MacBook Pro. Editing is so smooth and this MacBook, it made me so much more relaxed and the vi video previews were are so smooth. It had no lagging whatsoever. I could watch it as if I was watching the finished video. And literally, this is what I've been missing out on. At 12.48, I've noticed a lot of battery have been used up, but the MacBook Pro is still at 44% battery and held up after editing for about two hours, which was, I think it was a slightly more than I edited on the MacBook Pro 2019. Exporting time was also different. For around a two minute video on both these MacBooks, it took a couple seconds to export on the M4 and on the 2019 Intel, it took about five minutes. Now this is the part where I tell you there's no need to upgrade if you just use your MacBook to watch videos on YouTube because look at this. The 2019 MP quality is great, the colors are great, sound is great with bass, it's loud and clear. The brightness is just about bright enough but it could do a little bit better especially when the videos got darker colors that need a bit more separation.
On the M4 MacBook Pro, you can see a slight difference in the color. It's more warm and vibrant. Like if you just focus on Gordon Ramsay or Tom, you can see their skin tone is a lot more natural. Like you can see all the, the warmth and the different shades. Whereas on the 2019 MacBook Pro, the person's face is kind of more bland. It's more matte. And at 4.37 p.m. I got a low battery notification on the M4 MP. That's when I switched on to the low power mode. And I thought it was already turned on, so whoops. But never mind, I carried on. And at 5.13 p.m. it has died down on me. So because I never charged it to 100%, I plugged in the MacBook for a small charge. So, so far the M4 has won over high performance tasks like video editing, but kept a fair pace with web browsing and watching videos. Let's try the iPhone mirror on the Intel MP. And honestly, this is the first time I'm opening this function on here. And yeah, it's the same apart from slightly different layout. I can see the M4 MacBook Pro. The phone layout seems to pop out a bit more. Like it's, it looks a bit more 4D in my opinion. In the evening, I wanted to try some games out. I did buy this new game on the M4 MP the other day, but unfortunately, I couldn't play on the Intel MacBook because you need at least an M1 chip. But yeah, after charging the MacBook from 0%, I'm at 38% and I got the Asphalt Car Racing game to play because it was free and the graphics don't look too bad. And as soon as I turn on the game, I got a wheel of doom. And here we go. I tried to impress you all with my gaming skills, but yeah, overall the graphics are great. The performance is smooth, so it's a shame Apple put restrictions on games because this MacBook, I'm pretty sure could have handled my cat game for sure. So yeah, just watch me finish my race and guess what place I'll come in. After about 15 minutes of playing the game, the MacBook got super hot. Putting it on a pillow probably made it a lot worse. Now on the M4 MacBook Pro, I juiced the battery to only 20%, which is half of what I recharged the 2019 MacBook to be fair. And now I can play the game because I've got the M4 and it allows me to click into my cat game. The MacBook also automatically turned on the game mode, so that was cool and it went straight into the game. Performance feels exactly the same as in the game and the graphics etc. The only thing I no noticed is that the MacBook Pro M4 doesn't get as hot and no fan noises of course. It's also easier to see things when the game has like darker colors so it's a lot more better contrast between the colors, shades etc. <laughs> Finally. So the battery went down by a half and I'm not done yet. So I've stopped to play a bit of Netflix for the final test. On the 2019 MP, I can see a difference between the color shades and it's not as crisp. This is the difference with the M4 having the XDR display, but I am happy with the display on the 2019 Intel. I still enjoy it and only when I put the two MacBooks side by side, I noticed like the, the real difference. We're now at 32% battery and this is how the day went. So the battery kept it up until the editing stage and died around 3pm, which I then charged and remained pretty smooth for the 40% battery I charged it with. And that's a wrap. 
and at 10 p.m the m4 macbook pro also battery was at eight percent which i kept on watching until i got tired and decided to go to sleep so yeah that's me signing out for me at the end of the day it isn't just about the performance numbers it matters when the upgrade actually changes your workflow and for me it actually did because I did see how much the older MacBook Pro is holding me back and even though it still looks modern and I still get things done on it it just takes a lot more slower to do things like right now having the MacBook Pro with the M4 chip is just so much easier and quicker to use and especially for like my schedule which I have limited time to do things to work on my channel so it's just helped me out a lot but if your day in the life is more more chill like you're just doing like web browsing and going through YouTube videos making notes I feel like I would still keep my older MacBook Pro so I guess it depends on your workflow. If you have stepped into the M1 chip and above then upgrade isn't really that important but when you still have the Intel MacBook that's where you should start considering things because it does change a lot in terms of performance but I will miss the touch bar and like other things about the older MacBook Pro like how lightweight it was how thin it was so yeah definitely will be missed but I am grateful at how efficient the new MacBook is and how much it helps me if you enjoyed this side by side day in the life review don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!